I am Noriko Bulford, and this is Uncut News. We begin this broadcast with the news on the ongoing national recount of votes for the March 2nd general and regional elections. As of Monday afternoon, the Guyana Elections Commission completed the recount of at least 73 ballots for Region 9 and has since allocated that workstation to Region 10. There are now five workstations for Region 4, 3, 4, Region 6, and 3 for Region 10. GCOM has now completed the recount for Regions 1, 2, three, five, seven, eight, and nine, leaving regions four, six, and 10 to be completed. Now, as at the 31st May, we would have completed just about 1,739 boxes. I have the total for today just for region nine, which just had two boxes to be completed. So that now would have put us at a total of 1,704 to 1 uh, boxes completed out of that 2,339, which means that we have roughly about 598 boxes to be completed. That excludes the total that we would generate for today. The recount is now expected to conclude before June 13th after the Commission extended the deadline from May 31st. Continuing on to politics, on Saturday, Chief Executive Officer of the National COVID-19 Task Force, Joseph Harmon, ruled out a total lockdown across Guyana, saying, There is a rumor out there that there's going to be a complete lockdown in Guyana from next week. This rumor is forcing people to do panic buying and it's creating unnecessary crowds in our marketplaces and in places where people have to shop. I want to make this very clear that the National Corona Task Force has not considered a national lockdown. Harmon claimed that rumors of a lockdown has triggered panic buying, which has created unnecessary crowds in markets and other shopping areas. According to Harmon, the task force was merely considering an extension of the current restrictions past June 3rd, 2020. Nevertheless, he appealed to Guyanese to continue to practice frequent hand washing, social distancing, and public mask use. The APNU AFC and the PPPC continue to trade accusations of voters' fraud, with the latest of such accusations arising after the recent leak of a letter penned by the chairman of the Ghana Elections Commission, retired Justice Claudette Singh. The letter, which was addressed to the Commissioner of Police, Leslie James, asks the force to look into the coalition's claims of Guyanese migrants and those overseas on Elections Day having voted on March 2nd. On Sunday, the PPP rejected such claims and accused APNU of attempting to send GCOM on a, quote, wild fishing expedition to verify their claims of voter fraud. And bad news for marijuana smokers. The Guyana Police Force has recorded the destruction of over 300 million Guyana dollars of the plant in Burbies for the year thus far. According to Divisional Commander Senior Superintendent Calvin Brutus, 30 marijuana fields were destroyed and a total of 17 persons have been prosecuted thus far for the cultivation of marijuana. Senior Superintendent Brutus credits the use of drone technology in aiding the police to locate and identify cannabis cultivations in the region. A fire of mysterious origin has burned down a shop in Verbis for the second time in 10 years. Early Sunday morning, 75-year-old businessman William Lung was alerted of the fire shortly after it began around 3 a.m. The woodworking shop was located at Track W Plantation Caracas Village. The losses are estimated to be in the millions. If you're a Republic Bank Guyana customer, you may want to check your bank account. On Saturday, the Republic Bank Guyana Limited disclosed that it is still processing some of its Visa International debit card transactions as far back as February 2020. The admission was made after customers began complaining on social media 
of money being missing from their accounts. According to the bank, it has been actively resolving the backlog of outstanding transactions following the completion of its conversion to its new banking platform in November of 2019. In 2018, three ranks of the Ghana Police Force received a total of 50 fraud charges in relation to misconduct in the driver's license examinations. The three were released today after the prosecution failed to present sufficient evidence. 51-year-old Alfred Park of 1129 Diamond East Bank Demerara had denied the charge which alleged that on April 12, 2018 at Georgetown, with intent to defraud the public, he conspired with persons to commit a felony to which he uttered 12 questionnaires knowing them to be forged and that they were not written by the 12 persons whose names they were in. Meanwhile, 31-year-old Police Corporal Shanice Frazier of 199 Section A Field 7 South Sophia and 25-year-old Police Corporal Ryan Gray of 215 De Silver Street, Newtown, Georgetown, both had denied the charges which alleged that on April 12, 2018 at Georgetown with intent to defraud the public, they conspired with persons to commit a misdemeanor to which they uttered 38 questionnaires, knowing them to be forged in that they were not written by the 18 persons whose names they were in. According to the information, on the day in question, Park was responsible for invigilating the examination. The court heard that on the day of the exam, only 106 candidates showed up. However, on the conclusion of the examination, it was discovered that a total of 207 exam papers were submitted. And finally, we take a look at news from the diaspora. U.S. President Donald Trump has declared June Caribbean American Heritage Month. Trump lauded the contributions persons of Caribbean origin have brought to the United States, saying, quote, For generations, their skills, knowledge, innovation, and initiative have enhanced and advanced many aspects of our society. During National Caribbean American Heritage Month, we celebrate the rich history and vibrant culture of the more than 4 million Americans. Americans with origins in the Caribbean." End quote. It should be noted that Guyanese have held many positions in business, entertainment, and politics in American history throughout the years. In fact, the late Congresswoman and presidential candidate Shirley Chisholm was of Guyanese parentage. I am Noriko Bulford. Goodbye for now.